Okay, here's a unit P review, sources of magnetic fields, part one. I don't know that it's going to necessarily take a whole lot of parts for this. But, um, I'm not reviewing um, Ampere's law and how to do um, applications of it because those you, you have to go and look at the um, each of the problems. So this is more for multiple choice, I would guess. This is not a complete review, as, as no review of, of, like this is. Okay. So um, these are two different problems. Remember to pause the video as we go. Okay, so this is a wire coming into and out of the page. Now the um, direction of the current is indicated by the X. Would you be able to tell me which way the, this compass will point? This is a compass. Which way will it point if the, if the wire is going into and out of the page and it's designated by an X? Okay, go ahead and pause. All right, so uh, that X means that the current's going into the page because we're seeing the back of the feather, the, the feathers of the arrow. And I take and put my thumb in the direction um, of the current, and I just curl my fingers like that. And when I curl my fingers, um, that is going to show you the direction of the field. So the field is going to go like this. Now the field being in that direction just means that's the direction a compass would point. A compass would point this way. Incidentally, the field is always, if you draw a line to where you want to know the, where the field is, it's always going to be perpendicular to this line, so it's going to be, it's going to look like that. If I'm over here and I drew this line, it's going to look like this. Of course, if I get closer to this, if I only go this far out, then it's going to be bigger. And if I go real far away, then the field is going to be smaller. That's the field. The field, this is the field right here, this guy. This one's the field. Okay, notice the field is always perpendicular. All right, um, here's a solenoid. I put current in this way. Could you tell me which way these compasses are going to point? Go ahead and pause. Okay, these compasses, um, let's see, if you, got a, if you have a battery this way, that means it's the positive and the negative. So the current's going this way. So I'm going to use the right hand rule um, where you put your you put your um, hands, your fingers in the direction of the current. And when you do that, the field that your thumb shows you the direction of the magnetic field inside the solenoid. So the field inside the solenoid is going to loop down like this. It's going to come down, and it's going to loop around like this. Remember, magnetic field lines are always loops. Ooh, and they never cross one another. Okay, so that means that uh, this this there's some on this side as well. It's like a butterfly almost. But um, this is the direction that that compass will point. It'll point straight up, whereas this compass is going to point straight down. If I put a compass right here, it would point down as well. Okay, um, next one. Can you um, tell me what direction, if these have identical currents and they're both into the page, so there's these wires going in and out of the page, and, but the current is both heading that way, and they both have a current I, and they're both a distance A away. Can you tell me what the uh, magnetic field strength direction Strength and direction will be at the center, at the origin. Go ahead and pause. Okay, well, um, this this X is going to be, means that there's a current down. So I'm going to put my thumb down and I'm going to just curl my finger. So from the, the wire on the left, that's going to be pointing this way. That's the field's direction. Remember, fields don't curve. You might think that the field curves, but I'm showing you the vector for B right there. So it doesn't curve. Whereas this one is, um, if I take my thumb and put it in that direction and curl my fingers, this one is actually going to be pointing straight up. And so those are going to cancel out if those have the same eye and they're the same distance. And that field will be zero. So sometimes they cancel out, sometimes they don't. Okay, what about um, right here then? What would be the direction? I just want to know the direction of the field right at that point. Okay, so um, for this guy, if the field is heading this way, 
Then I'm going to just curl my fingers in the direction it's heading and that shows you that the field is heading that way. A right angle. And this one, this one, it, the current is heading into the thing like that. And so, and so you curl your fingers. And so that's heading, draw a dotted line. That's got to be perpendicular. So that's going to be heading that way. That's perpendicular. And so these two, uh, being the same magnitude, because they're the same amount of current, when you add them up, you should get a field that looks like that. The field is to the left. Okay. Onward. Now we have a um, current that's going... These are two separate cases. So um, I just want to um, talk about the, um, the um, force that these put on each other. So here's a wire and the current's coming out at us because of the dot. And this wire, the current's going in toward us because of the X. And um, what we'd like to know is uh, for wire, this will be wire one and this is wire two. Can you tell me which way wire two will be pushed? Which way will wire two be pushed? Okay, so um, if the dot, you first have to find the field due to this guy. So the field due to this guy is uh, going to be going this way. It's going to be circling around this way. So right here, it's that way. That's the B due to this guy. Over here it's downward, over here it's that way, and over here it's this way. Okay, but the B right here is up, and now I'm going to um, take my thumb and put my thumb in the direction of the current, and my fingers, I'm using the right hand rule from, from last year, or from last unit, and so that's going to be, let's see, if the current is going down, and the field is up, straight up, do you see how that gets pushed to the right? Incidentally, if that gets pushed to the right, Newton's third law says that this one must be pushed to the left because the forces are always equal and opposite. And so I don't have to go and do all that rigmarole, though it'd be nice to check and see what that indeed this does go that way. So if this gets pushed that way, that one gets pushed that way. If this gets pushed inward, we know this one gets pushed inward too because of Newton's third law. Hey, let me tell you that this force between these two is 10 Newtons. Um, for the given length that it is. Could you tell me um, what the force when they're only half the distance? So this is D. What is the force when they're only D over 2? How much force will these put on one another? Okay, the force that they'll put on one another is 5 Newtons. That's because the force per length uh, is equal to uh, mu naught all over 2 pi r i1 i2. Hope I got that right. I usually derive that when I need to use it. But you see we have the same i's as up there. But we have only um, half the distance. Oh, 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 boy, am I glad I caught this. If I have, to, that's going to be a stronger force. Oh, my gosh. So glad I didn't mess that up, or at least leave it left messed up. That's 20 Newtons, guys. 20 Newtons because you're twice as close. Okay. So you put a half there, and that doubles it. <clears throat> okay, next one. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I think I can take care of this in one more video. All right, I'll talk to you. Bye.